Translating a website has never been easier. I am truly amazed by how simple it was to set this up. <laughs> My name is Marvin Aziz and today we are going to talk about how to go multilingual using Webflow and Weglot. It's amazing how simple it was to actually set it up using Webflow and Weglot. I am stunned by the simplicity of this. So, um, I promise if you are going to check this out, you will be amazed as well how simple it actually is. They made sure you don't have to worry about anything. hreflangs, SEO, best practices, it's all in there. Subdirectories or subdomain, even go without it. It's up to you. It's really easy to set up. So let's get right into it. So let's start with a quick overview of a week lot. Thanks, by the way, for sponsoring this video. It's really powerful and I hope you as a viewer um, benefit a lot from this video. As you can tell, they're quite good at translating stuff. Or oh, they even do Jimdo and uh, custom JS. You might be interested to see the pricing. So this is the current pricing as of 2023 in July. They've got a lot of resources actually um, on how to get started. It's really easy. You can click here and see the Webflow integration, but you don't have to go through all of this because I'm going to show you within a couple of minutes, literally. So let's have a quick look on how the final result is going to look. This is my website and as you can tell, usually it's in English, um, now it's in German. I haven't written a single word, so I didn't translate anything. This was all automatically translated. The translations are not perfect, right? But they're pretty damn good. As you can tell down here, German is not the only language I use. So we can go to French, for example, and it loads my website in French. It's amazing. It's like magic. Spanish. I've set up as well and you can tell I'm using subdomains right so it's switching to ES here it's switching to FR for French first I can go to my latest one about ChatGPT and using it within Webflow it's all translated it's 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 crazy how easy this was if you haven't done already you can go to Weglot and sign up for a free account they have a free tier as well I'm simply going to log in using my credentials and then you'll see this and you can simply enter your project name. I'm going to call it web to flow and I'm going to tell it that we are using Webflow as a technology, right? So then all you have to do is type in your URL web to the flow.com, for example, right? I'm going to select the original language, which is English and the translated languages. So I want to have German. I'd like to have Spanish. I would like to have French as well. For the URL type, um, you can choose between subdomains and subdirectories. By the way, I've set this up without actually choosing a URL type. You can do that as well. So um, it, it still works. <laughs> But for this, I am going to use subdomains and I'm going to click on next. And for the subdomains, you need to change some DNS settings, right? So you can simply copy all those um, DNS entries and paste them into your whatever it is, GoDaddy or whatever. Um, I'm sure you know how to do this. If not, just contact your support at GoDaddy or Kinsta or whatever it is. And I'm sure they will help you figure out how to do this. It's quite easy. And by the way, if you need further assistance, there's a whole playlist provided by Weglot about setting up your DNS for Weglot. So if you need some more information on that, check out the description below. I'm, I'm quite lucky because my, my host, my hoster is um, managing all of this. So I was just able to copy all of that stuff and send it to them. But um, just so you know, these are additional entries. So you um, simply add them to your DNS records. So I simply copied the DNS entries and sent them to my host. Um, he's going to take care of it. While he does, we can simply skip this step and go to almost the final step, right? <laughs> 
um, I can simply copy that code, go to my Webflow settings. So um, you just go to your Webflow website and you go to custom code and then you're gonna see your custom code in here. And I am going to paste it into the head, right? So add the code at the end of the head tag. I'm gonna save the changes. I'm gonna publish that. And Webflow, by the way, became really fast at publishing. I'm really happy with that. It's still waiting for the translation. So let's actually reload the page. And you can see now, here's my language switcher down here. I can switch to Espanol. Perfecto, no? And I can switch back to English, right? And as you can tell, uh, right now, it's not changing the sub subdomain because it hasn't been set up by my hoster yet, but it's gonna take just a couple of minutes, I promise. We can uh, select our industry. Let's say education and the type of website is a blog. And now I go to my translations and that's basically it. You're finished some of the settings, right? So um, what's really interesting to me was that you can actually define the tone of translation because as you might have noticed, it's translating automatically as soon as you visit the page first, right? Um, I can choose less formal, which is the appropriate tone in my case. I can choose not to display automatic translations. If the quality is not good enough for you, you can manually translate it all, right? Um, I'm gonna choose less formal for everything. And then you can actually click into the language and translate manually, right? And on the left side, you always see the original language. On the right side, you see the translation. And if the translation is not good enough for you, you can simply change it. It's so simple, right? Boom, saved. Now, when I go back, I can have a look at the URLs and there you see um, all the URLs that have been translated already. And then you can go to the visual editor actually and just click on edit. And maybe this is not good enough for me. I can click on edit and then I can edit in here. It's so simple guys, like I don't know how much easier it, it can actually be. You can create a glossary. So um, if I add a glossary, I can say, okay, every time I mention the word clonable, I don't want to translate it, neither into German, nor French, nor Spanish. It's not case sensitive, boom. And that's my first glossary entry, right? It's a rule. Okay, you can even add professional translations, right? So if you have anything where you say, um, I don't, I don't want to translate this. This is too, too complicated for me. You can simply check all these strings and say, let's order a professional translation. Then you can go to your card. If you go to general settings, what was really interesting for me was that I'm able to auto switch the language for the user, right? So if your browser setting is set to German by default, it's going to redirect you to the German version. And the fallback is always English, in my case at least, right? So the original language. You can even set the fallback language to another one, which is really comfortable. So I'm going to save that setting. I can go to the language switcher, which is so awesome. So you're going to be amazed how, how great this is. You can either say um, you simply add custom CSS to it, which is, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to have, but I much rather prefer the switcher visual editor, which works like this. So as you can tell, the switcher is down here on the left bottom side. And if I simply drag this somewhere else, I can put it there. If you open the switcher position, you can reset it to default. Um, or you can target a sibling, for example. You can change the style as well, right? So um, 
I want to try, for example, uh, this one right here. So you can see the flag um, and the language name. And I want to change the default color a bit darker, maybe. Right. So it's that easy. You can even go transparent, which will not work in my case. But you could. And you also can choose whether it opens on hover or not. You can even hide it on different screen sizes, right? If it's mobile, hide it. Maybe it's taking up too much space. If it's desktop, maybe you have another reason not to show it. I don't know, but you could do it. I actually don't like it up there. Let's try to add it to my cookie button. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Maybe I can put it on top of it. Oh yeah. Oh, I love that. See how easy this was? Let's save that. Boom. And now if I reload my page, let's switch to German and you can see how to automate invoices completely in German. And it, like, honestly, the translation is quite good. I can tell you. Ist die Nutzung von mehr kostenlos? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. You can exclude translations. Easy. You can go back to the setup. And that's where I will be able to enable my subdomains or not. If you go to Webflow settings, you will find dynamic elements. So if you have something on your website, which is loaded dynamically, right? Not up on page load. Weglot might have issues finding that string and translating it. So if you have something like that, feel free to add this element by using the element class with a selector, right? You can simply add a class, dynamic element, um, string one, right? The description. And if you have that element dynamically on the page, it's going to translate that every time it reloads. So simple, so useful. I'm amazed. In case you missed it, Weglot also takes care of translating your metadata. So if you go into your project, click into it, you can go to the visual editor, for example, and start editing. You will see the top navigation up here by Weglot. And if you click on your language, you want to edit, click on SEO, it's going to open up the meta description and the title and you can simply change it to whatever you want. And um, as you can tell, it's automatically translated already. So I hope you do now realize how easy it is to go multilingual and to smash those language barriers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you like this style of content. See you in the next one.